I've been doing a bunch of videos to here today, uh, mostly highlighting uh, some of the small vessels of my different collections, those that have been completed and those that are works in progress. Uh, I've been doing these small uh, groups of videos in part to uh, kind of give a, a little overview of where, what the projects I have in mind of these uh, different collections. Uh, so there's going to be, uh, at some point I'm probably going to have to hit some of the capital vessels, more of the hover vessels. I already hit a few in one of the videos, um, just because that uh, collection didn't have much in the way of uh, small vessels at all. So this uh, this here is uh, for, for my Freedom, Freedom Trade Builders, FTB. Um, so... I am, uh, this one, it does have, the, you have uh, currently, uh, we can see one, two, three, four, five small vessels. The carry-on C, that big, uh, that big brick, there will actually be at least one more of that, the carry-on P, uh, the C being for cargo, P being for passengers or personnel. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do the P on the inside. I've been doing uh, some sort of living quarters. Uh, if it's just going to be a bunch of uh, um, uh, first class, uh, business class, economy uh, type uh, seating, or, or if I'm just doing it like it's more like a troop transport, I'm really not entirely sure. Uh, but the one thing I do know for that uh, it's basically going to be the carry on C with the cargo stripped out and then put in uh, a bunch of passenger seating. So at this moment, uh, it's pretty much, I know that I've uh, solved building the carry-on C and getting that uh, to where I like it. And then the carry-on P is just a uh, modified version of that. So let's go take here a look at, uh, let's start off uh, with the uh, Sparrow Swallow, the one that's actually finished on on the workshop as well as the Hawk Talent, but let's start with the Swallow here because this one is like a bunch of my collections. They all have one starting SV, an SV that is built with just iron, copper, and silicon. This one, like uh, a bunch of the uh, small vessels, The, the other collections, it is actually built as warp drive ready. You get uh, your uh, cobalt, you get throw in a uh, warp drive. Well, you probably want to put the fuel tank in first, then throw in the warp drive. And I want to say that I included a cavity for the oh, yes, that's right. You'll want to throw actually the mobile constructor in first. You may be able to get it from some of the other angles, but it'd be probably easiest to hit it from here. Uh, your fuel tank there. So yeah, the mobile constructor goes right up down there in the middle, way towards the uh, front, or kind of the middle of the vessel here. And like I said, it might be possible to get it from one of the other angles, but this right now as it's landed, uh, you really don't get a good uh, shot at the other angle, you might be able to see the mobile constructor or where it's supposed to go. So this, like some of my other vessels, it really is, uh, I've designed a bunch of them to make it look like you can really can truly service them in the field. Uh, stuff. I really do like this one. There is a purpose to the size and the scale of the Swallow. It is designed to fit in the cargo. No, not the one of the uh, the Pelican capital vessel has six bays on it. They're not very big doors at all. Uh, capital vessel uh, uh, doors, but uh, it's just a small uh, small spot. It's got to fit in, and the Swallow is designed to fit in that. So you can park that in uh, the Pelican, so you can easily park six swallows, you know, one in each one of those bays. Typically, I might uh, throw uh, a swallow in you know, maybe one or two bays and throw something else, uh, some hover vessels in some of the other bays. 
other starting vessel here in the uh, FTB collection is the Hummingbird. The Hummingbird is my original uh, starting vessel. Just two Gatling guns. It uh, is meant to be cheap and easy to get uh, out there and use. Um, so it was one of the uh, first ones. Uh, I may have started on other vessels, uh, small vessels before this, but this is the first one I actually completed and then used in a survival game. Uh, it has had a little modifications from the original concept. Uh, dropped uh, some of the thrusters on on it that brought it up to a unlock level 10, and now it has been dropped down to an unlock level 7. It is not tough. Um, it's just mostly to get you out to the moon, get those first resources uh, from the moon, and move on from there. So it's a light scout. Okay, over here we have the Sparrow. This is not on the workshop. This, uh, the front end here, you may notice other than the uh, upgraded weapons and minor changes, uh, and I have not finished the signal work on this yet. So I'm just gonna click it, uh, stuff. It does have the motion sensors, I just haven't worked them up yet to work that. Uh, the, uh, this vessel here, uh, the, it's got an upgraded weapons. We uh, changed the section back here for a little bit of a new look. I do like variety. Uh, so I get the small jets on this. That was the objective of this vessel, was to do a small jet build that I might get a better performance uh, for uh, high gravity worlds, better acceleration, just for the fuel economy that the small jets uh, offer. Since uh, I uh, really like how the Swallow uses uh, the space under here to give a total, I believe, of 10 uh, large uh, cargo boxes. Uh, I figured I'd uh, use borrow the front end of the Swallow, spit it, uh, spin it out here for the Sparrow. And uh, in this case, I'm going uh, to upgrade it to your hardened steel a little bit, so tougher than the Swallow making this the upgrade up from there. And, uh, we have our warp drive already included in this vessel. So that gives me the Sparrow. You may wonder a little bit why these uh, ramps and doors in the front here. That is mostly so that from the ground I can access the cockpit with less trouble. It was one of the uh, issues I uh, came to realize with one of my builds that uh, uh, the way it was to get to the cockpit, you practically had to jump up onto the vessel uh, and before you could get to the cockpit. This way, I make sure there's an easy way, especially once the motion sensors are in place and. Uh, they're in place, I just need to wire them up. But once they're wired up, you know, that you would get here, it would open up for you, you'd, hit, you'd be able to uh, more surely hit the cockpit uh, to get uh, going. The Hawk Talon, uh, let's see, that's uh, my tiny small vessel. Uh, I find that the hover vessel is easy to take inside a base, but the Hawk Talon, uh, there are a few places that Getting a hover vessel in there, it can be difficult. Uh, notably, one of the places I really first gave it a good uh, test spin against a point of interest was the planetary vessel uh, platform, the base that accompanies uh, Vesta. And since it was raised up off the ground, uh, the one that I went after, there was uh, my uh, hover vessel just there was not a uh, way for me to get it up there unless I brought it up with using a capital vessel. I could have you know, used a capital vessel, lifted it up, landed it on the platform and gone in that way. But it was a great opportunity to give my uh, Hawk Talon a test spin. Uh, there was a few times that I, it was in there, just because I had some trouble uh, controlling a small vessel inside these enclosed spaces. But I uh, ended up uh, that the vessel was on its side but I still mowed down the aliens. 
uh, because it was I figured it was better to take care of the threats than to try to right the vehicle so I was uh, battling them right set up. Okay, so I have covered, I think I'll say that I've covered them all here, except for the carry-on C. This is one of my works in progress. There is a fair bit of it that has been done. If we come in here, uh, you can see how I've ranged a, uh, basically a stairway. The carry-on C is divided into three levels. Uh, the, uh, the front area here, I might have done a bunch of it with the hardened steel to give it some more durability, but I found that uh, to the vessel was getting a little heavy, uh, so that I might have some str uh, struggles with high gravity worlds. So I replaced a bunch of it uh, on the inside here with just uh, simple steel blocks, lightening, uh, making it lighter. Uh, at one point, I was uh, going to have even more storage than it currently has, is, currently has, and uh, I ended up uh, deciding that I needed to rearrange it, cut back on the storage because it was getting again too. The vessel was just getting too heavy, um, and I was going to lose a lot of the lift of this brick because this is pretty much it's a flying brick. So we have a bunch of storage. Over here we have RCS. This thing actually does have a lot of RCS. This is this is a vessel where I you know would make the case I would love some tier two RCS. Um, Cause I would love this thing to handle a little better than a brick. But it it, well, it looks like a flying brick and even with the uh, lots of RCS on this right now. Let's see what I am. Uh, up to 217 RCS. This may have some more when I, by the time I'm finished with it, but it, uh, it really kind of, uh, for me, it handles like a flying brick. Um, so this has a lot of, a lot of storage here. Uh, if we go over here, we see that this is area is unfinished. This is not going to be an exact. Uh, it's going to be a stairwell like this over here, but I'm going to have to flip some things around a bit for it to work properly. There is a method uh, to the madness here. As we come in, again, more RCS, more, more maintenance here. Uh, we go down here, uh, stuff. We will have another one of the doors out with a ramp stuff door into this uh, main interior but if we go up these stairs and up we have and go into another area we have a door out and it might seem a little odd to have a door clear up here however this vessel is designed to dock on the uh, outside of some capital vessels and in that case the capital vessel door is actually arranged to be here so that they will line up and you would actually go out this uh, ramp right into the capital vessel. Again, a bunch of the vessel is still not finished inside here. Uh, stuff. I was lightening things, even though things weren't uh, finished, lightening things up here because I know that it was going to get heavier yet by the time it was done. We have cockpits do both the front and the back of the vessel. So it's really hard for me to keep track of which is the front and back. But it flies either way. There is uh, definitely some symmetry going on in, in here. Okay, this is incomplete. Let's go over to the stairwell, the completed stairwell, and you'll get a, a, a better feel for If we go down here, there is actually another cockpit to the side. And there will be one to the other side as well. Uh, these uh, are for the intention, and I've used them occasionally as such, that you would basically, uh, you'd have your, you know, looking out this door, uh, your capital vessel that you're trying to dock with would be that way. And so you'd have a uh, cockpit right there, like you're um, in that cockpit, you're seeing what, where you're uh, trying to line up your uh, uh, this very large small vessel uh, 
to dock. And of course I did hear uh, these making it look like they're rollers. The way the capital vessel is designed, there are brackets on the capital vessel whether you would line that up and li uh, help it helps ensure that the door is properly aligned. You will notice that this, these doors are, back, are uh, uh, not centered, so that is part of the reason why the stairwells, um, I can't use the symmetry tool to make the stairwells uh, on this stuff because I have to have these doors off center. So where this is on this, uh, whether this be the back or the front, this is to one direction of the capital vessel. I then, uh, depending on how you've parked this, I needed to make sure that the, when you would rotate the capital vessel around, or rotate the small vessel around on the capital vessel, so if you're docking it the other way, the vessel, the doors will still be, so if you were to flip this thing oh, 180 degrees around, the doors will still be exactly where you're seeing them right here. So uh, in that respect, there, it's a bit of asymmetry to create the uh, symmetry I needed. This thing uses a lot of the medium jets uh, underneath the uh, um, the open grates there. So this thing uh, basically the uh, all the engines and thrusters of this thing uh, are onto each side, allowing the middle section to be the cargo can, uh, cargo space and uh, the top uh, section here which will be finished off be kind of like the crew quarters and a bunch of the maintenance and support. Uh, I will also be throwing a warp drive in there. So that uh, this is the carry-on C. The carry-on P basically as I uh, indicated before uh, basically you strip out the cargo you and put uh, passenger capacity uh, in there instead, so a whole bunch of passenger seating. But at the moment, I figure that just worry about. If, uh, I don't need to have a carry-on P uh, in play uh, until I got the carry-on C actually finished, and I'm satisfied with that because it would just be a modification of that. So there we go. That is the small vessels of the FTB, the Freedom Trade Builders. Okay, and. Uh, Enjoy my little tour there.